Hello, and welcome to episode three of the third series of the Haiku P podcast. My name is Patricia, and in this week's podcast, I'm going to be doing a little bit of thinking out loud about the essence of haiku. Not the rules or the form it should take, but what, at least for me, is its very being, its heartbeat. After that, I'll give you a short review of Vandana Parashar's new chapbook, and I'll finish up with some Renku. I'm afraid I might have oversold the idea of the essence of haiku in my intro, but what I hope the podcast gives you today is pause for thought. Remember though, these are my thoughts, albeit after having done quite a bit of reading and listening to you via the feedback you sent me in your emails. Whether you agree or disagree with me, feel free to tell me. I'm not so precious that I'll be upset if you have a contrary opinion. I like a healthy and respectful debate. As you'll know if you've listened to the last couple of podcasts, I've been contemplating the essence of haiku, but having trouble getting going. There's so much to say, but where to start and how, as my children would say, to stay on topic. It's been hard and I'm not promising that I'll not head off on tangents from time to time, but I'll try and do my best. It might be fair to say that my comments are influenced by the haiku world post-shiki. Indeed, was there a haiku world before him? But that's a completely different podcast, and one I've attempted in the past. I may go back to it. Anyway, if I were to go through Shiki's manifesto, I'd have to say that I pretty much agree with most of it. But there are certain things that should not be forgotten or ignored from the days before Shiki, as they would make our haiku world much smaller. I hope to point those out as I wander through the topics. After much toing and froing, I decided to start my cogitations with the haiku or aha moment. I was wondering how to define it when I came across a definition by Michael Dillon Welsh, which I rather like. He says that there are perhaps three sorts of haiku moment. The original moment of inspiration that motivates the poet to write. The moment depicted in the poem and the moment of realisation that the reader experiences on reading the finished poem. The opinion of many modern-day haijin seems to be that the haiku moment should be a direct observation, a notion which comes in part from the 19th century European realism movement and doesn't have Japanese origins. Personally, I don't agree with that proposition. I think it's perfectly acceptable, although I find it hard myself, to write so-called desk haiku. Something which may be sparked from a book, poem or magazine you've read, a film you've seen, or is just popped into your head. Who's to say that direct experience is more important in haiku than an idea which comes from your imagination, or is inspired by somebody else's imagination? What do you think? Let me illustrate this with one of Bashu's poems. Summer grasses. Traces of dreams of ancient warriors. Surely this is something that's been inspired by an historical event that Bashu has not experienced himself. Rather, he's heard of it through reading about it or through stories or sagas passed down through centuries. You know, that oral tradition that so many cultures have. Does that make it any less a haiku? Can you visualise Bashu lying in the grass, touching it perhaps, just communing with it somehow, and feeling within it the traces of dreams of those ancient warriors? It really doesn't matter to me that this clearly happened in the past, nor that the feeling of the dreams come from his imagination. It's fiction. He can't have spoken with the soldiers. He's written a poem that communicates his aha moment superbly. Don't you think? And in so doing, you and I will have our aha moment. At least, I hope you do. This poem also illustrates a technical point I want to make. The haiku moment or to return to Michael Dillon Welsh again, the first aha moment often takes place in the past, but in the writing of it we express it in the present tense, as if it happens in the here and now. As James Hackett once said, now is the touchstone of the haiku experience. Sticking with the technical, I'd also like to say that you can have as many aha moments as you like, but unless you're really lucky, or naturally talented, a worthy verse 
will not be the result of all of them. Jane Reichold wrote, In my early years of haiku writing, I easily accepted the prevalent credo being espoused on how to write haiku. This was, sometimes implied and occasionally expressed as being, if the author's mind or heart was correctly aligned in the proper attitude while experiencing a so-called haiku moment, one merely had to report on the experience to have a darn good haiku. I came across Aware, or Aware, a haiku primer, written by hand and illustrated by Betty Drevniok. I came away with her precept, write haiku in three short lines using the principle of comparison, contrast or association. On page 39, she used an expression I'd been missing in the discussion of haiku when she wrote, This technique provides the pivot on which the reader's thought turns and expands. Technique! So there are tools one can use, I thought joyfully. If you've listened to me before, you'll know that I really, really recommend Jane's work, Writing and Enjoying Haiku, A Hands-On Guide. When I find myself word-bound, I turn to her try out a technique that I don't normally use, and suddenly the world becomes bright again and full of words. But to get back on topic, Jane gives us a number of techniques we can try in order to improve our haiku writing in general, and the haiku moment in particular. But here's another take on how to create a haiku moment. Many of us are photographers. I know I love to take photos, and I particularly enjoy using the macro setting on the camera. As I was reading for this particular episode, I found an article by Ray Rasmussen in the New Zealand Poetry Society pages. These pages are a great resource, by the way. He said, Both photography and haiku composition lead to an intense focusing on direct experience that is different from normal daily living. For example, normal practice when visiting a place like Kurimoto Garden might be to walk around, chat with a friend, enjoy the sunshine, hold hands, look at elements of the garden, that sort of thing. Instead, when engaged in the process of photography, I focus in, attempting to isolate forms and colours that strike my aesthetic sense. Looking through the lens, composing the frame, selecting the camera settings, imagining the print, all these provide a deeply relaxing contemplation of place. This contemplation or focus can help us find our haiku moment. He uses a quote from one of his favourite Japanese poets, Hokushi, to illustrate his point. I'm going to translate the poem slightly differently. My burnt hut, ashes, but wonderful the cherry blooming on the hill. It's hard to imagine standing in front of your burnt hut, yet focusing on the cherry tree. But now imagine you have a camera in your hand or to your eye, and you're focusing on the cherry tree, and blurring the image of the burnt hut. Does that help? Let me know if you have another technique of creating or finding the aha moment. I can share it with everyone else on the podcast. And now for something a little different. A book review. If you've listened to the podcast before, you'll recognise the name Vandana Parashar as one of our regular contributors. Some time ago she told me she was preparing her first chapbook for publication, And I'm happy to say that we can all read it, for free, and it's called I Am. There's a link in the show notes. As I read through the book, I was taken on a journey as a female from a young age to a somewhat more mature woman. Some of the events described in her senryu I recognised and some I didn't. But Shloka Shankar, who writes a brief description of the book on the publisher's website, is quite right when she says of Vandana's book, No topic is off limits for her as she dons the role of daughter, wife and mother, each with its own set of challenges. The senryu in this book made me smile, left me with a lump in my throat, and sometimes made me a little bit uncomfortable. Nonetheless, I am pleased I read Vandana's book, because I think it will encourage me to write more freely about topics that matter very much to me, whether they'll make people uncomfortable or not. Thank you so much, Vandana. I'd like to finish with a final verse in the book, which made me ponder. Reincarnation. How many of us want to be women again? Well, Vandana, 
I decided in the end if I had to come back again, and I'm not entirely sure I'd want to. Despite the challenges you've written about, and more than I could probably add, I'd happily come back as a woman again. But whether you're a woman or not, I think you'll enjoy reading Vandana Senryu. Check out the link in the show notes and give it a read. Perhaps a few reads. And now for the Renku, which I'm happy to say I'm going to read to you in its completed form. My thanks to all the poets who helped me put this together. Kim Russell, Richard Bailey, Wendy C. Bialek, M. Shane Pruitt, Veronica Hosking, James Young, Andrew Sire, S. Silenga, B. S. Sorocha, Ricky Rivers Jr., Craig Kitner, Miniko Takahashi, and Jonathan Roman. Check it out on the Poetry P website to see exactly who has written each verse. I so enjoyed coordinating it, and I got extremely excited towards the end to see how it was going to conclude. I love the story. I hope you do too. Don't forget, you can read it on the Renku page of the Poetry P website. So here you go. Marble steps sculpted by endless souls, a welcome chill. Mural tablets, how ancient my son's name. Wind in the willows, unanticipated storm, green blades impaling. Will the night be dark, or give no shelter? Kissed moon, all those unfinished poems under water. Empty leaves, the fading colours. An old quilt, grandmother's warmth passes down. Bitterly cold, she adds peat to the fire. Hypnotic glow, involuntary shiver reaches his soul. Snow glitter in the alpine air. Shawl bent, the long trudge through winter, collecting logs. A returning trapper offers his assistance. Breaking bread, news from another village, northern lights. The sky lamp shines long tonight, lovebirds. Urgent flight, whisking wings, gallows bright. Red dawn, a new life divides. Market square mired in slush, a solitary rose petal. People gather and scatter, tides wait for no one. A die cast, no going back, overseas. Spring quickening, she vomits on the deck. Migration Coming home to nest. Murmurations of candy-coloured blossoms. And so it ends. Thank you once again to everyone for their thoughtful and wonderful work. Now it needs a name. I'd be really grateful if you'd send me some ideas via email. I'm not very good at naming work. We've already started putting together Renkus 3 and 4, and I know some of you have told me that you'd like to join in. And you'll be getting an email from me. But we're always happy to have more people to write Renku verses and create a range of stories. If you'd like to join in and you haven't already told me, drop me an email and I'll make sure you get a verse. Thanks very much for coming along and listening to me today. I hope I didn't ramble too much and I hope I've given you something to think about. Email me, let me know. I'm going to be continuing with Essence Topics for a few weeks to come, so if you want to make some points, if you'd like to get involved and give me some new bits and pieces to think about, I'm very happy to hear from you. Next time on the Haiku P podcast, it's one of our specials, where we all get a chance to write on a specific topic, and this time it's going to be love. I know, it's a bit clichéd what with February being the month of Valentine's Day, but I promise I've got some cracking verses for you. The deadline for the love topic has passed. So now I'd be delighted to receive your submissions on recipes. Tell me about your favourite recipes, your favourite food, your memories inspired by recipes. The deadline is the 1st of March. So until next time, keep writing. If there's something you're unclear about or I've left something out of the show notes, drop me an email and I'll put it right. Ciao.